And this was the ELAD um, 208 trial, a global multi-center trial on the ELAD bioartificial liver for patients with severe acute alcoholic hepatitis. Alcoholic hepatitis carries with it uh, about a 40% mortality rate. Liver transplant isn't uh, possible for most of the patients with acute alcoholic hepatitis. And so um, there's really not another therapy that's life-saving. And uh, Vital Therapies uh, ELAD um, system provides for bioartificial liver support and resuscitation of patients with acute alcoholic hepatitis. So our trial was to investigate uh, the uh, benefit of this in patients with uh, the most severe forms of alcoholic hepatitis. It's based on um, their bioreactors have these uh, C3A cells. These are clones of um, human hepatoblastoma from the Hep G2 cell line and have a wide spectrum of metabolic function. They produce uh, anti-inflammatory agents, anti-apoptotic agents, uh, growth factors, coagulation factors, and other proteins. So they're very metabolically active and that's why we study them to see whether they provide uh, for liver support and survival in patients with this uh, awful disease. This trial was set up for it to be a one-shot uh, one shot deal. We randomized uh, some 97 patients to control arm and uh, they received five days, of, they were to receive five days of treatment. Uh, the majority, 80 plus, got at least three days of treatment. Uh, so we think that Doing that for that period of time, um, you know, stops this uh, subfulminant liver failure and gives the patients a chance to, um, you know, to turn the corner if they're not too far gone. Well, they stay tethered to the machine, and the serum uh, circulates extracorporeally through these um, bioreactors, um, and uh, then after that, they're uh, followed for 91 days, and. That's the study endpoint for uh, efficacy, but we followed patients uh, for five years. None of them are out that long yet, but anybody who lived, we continued to follow. Uh, so we have um, survival up until uh, I think three months ago was the cut point. Patients receive a central line, uh, then uh, blood is ultrafiltrated, and the ultrafiltrate is pumped through bioreactors oxygen is added, glucose is added, and um, there are uh, cell traps and warmers and uh, a lot of analytic uh, material, uh, you know, equipment, and then the blood is reconstituted and returned to patient. And these bioreactors have semi-permeable um, microfibers, so the extra capillary space is populated with the C3A liver cells, and there's bidirectional exchange with the serum that is uh, that flows intraluminally. There are indications for liver transplant and acute alcoholic hepatitis, but uh, very few patients meet the criteria. These essentially have to be pretty much naive alcoholics with a lot of insight, very strong family support, uh, no history of recidivism, and most patients don't meet that uh, uh, criteria. Um, and uh, you know, they may be eligible for a liver transplant several months or a couple of years later after they've done rehab and all of that, but in the face of the acute insult, most of them are not uh, eligible. We've got some studies on mechanism uh, underway. We have uh, actually a poster um, that uh, is being presented later today on some of the mechanisms of action, but uh, our, our impression is that this um, system allows for amelioration of the uh, inflammatory um, uh, cascade that inhibits regeneration and um, uh, that that's you know really how it, how it works. With the organ shortage we do need other tactics for addressing end-stage organ disease and um, you know we saw that with the artificial heart heart is essentially a pump, so it's perhaps easiest to uh, make an artificial heart. Kidney is a little bit more complex, 
And then the liver is a challenge at, uh, because um, it does so many different functions that uh, I'm, you know, I don't know if we'll ever have a bioartificial liver. I suspect we will, but um, it is uh, challenging to develop. We found in our study that uh, a subpopulation of patients had a very impressive benefit from ELAD. So in a pre-specified uh, subgroup analysis of patients with MELDs below 28 who didn't have severe coagulopathy um, or, um, uh, as I say, the highest of MELDs, they had a, um, a uh, large survival advantage if they received ELAD as opposed to just standard of care for alcoholic hepatitis. So reduction in mortality of approximately 30%. So the controls had a, about a 45% mortality rate and those patients who were in uh, ELAD uh, on bioartificial liver had a reduction of about 30%, so very impressive. We're thinking that uh, patients who have much more severe disease uh, don't have the host milieu that's conducive to regeneration. And so you can, you know, you can, you can um, affect inflammation, you can, you can affect apoptosis, uh, you can throw a lot of regenerative growth factors at the diseased liver, but if the patient's in renal failure and, you know, some patients are just too far gone to, um, to benefit. We also found that older patients didn't have as much benefit from ELAD. Uh, and again, we know senescent livers don't uh, regenerate as well. What was um, promising is that we found that the patients that were younger, below 50, with uh, MELDs below 28, um, benefited imp impressively. And uh, that was the majority of patients in the trial. 120 of the 200 patients that we randomized had the lower MELDs. Uh, those patients had a significant survival advantage with ELAD. And so we plan um, a confirmatory trial to start in the next, uh, in the near future, looking at that subpopulation. And we're going to study very sick uh, patients in terms of their um, a cholestasis. So we'll be looking at patients with bilirubins in the very high teens, where we, you know, where there's a high mortality rate without therapy, and where we think this is um, very promising. The recidivism rate in the patients who received ELAD was lower. We think maybe that, you know, it's five days of being tethered to this system. Maybe it's sort of a, a wake-up call to, to patients that, wow, uh, I got myself in trouble there. We don't know. But we did um, outpatient PET testing, which is very sensitive for alcohol intake for the duration of the study, uh, the endpoint being 91 days. And um, those treated did have a a lower um, alcohol use after treatment, but what's important to note is that alcohol use did not impact survival. So this, this isn't the reason that ELAD patients did better than control in the subgroups where they did uh, alcohol relapse wasn't a cause of mortality in either arm. I think if once we prove that this works, it will have to be part of a larger package of treatment where patients then get alcohol rehab um, and, uh, you know, a focus on health and well-being rather than a, you know, a five-day treatment uh, done and gone. We're uh, planning this uh, confirmatory trial, which we think will start uh, early in 2016, uh, looking at the population of patients that were younger, lower melds, and um, without renal failure or severe coagulopathy. If we look at the trial that we just did, there's a huge survival benefit in that cohort. So we're hoping to reproduce that. That would be really neat.